Hey guys, Phil and Sam here with the Photography Masterclass. Today we are responding to a couple student questions about some more advanced photography tips. And in this video, we're going to be talking about bokeh. Which is something a little bit more advanced in photography that you'll hear a lot of photographers wanting to achieve good bokeh. So I don't really know exactly what that means. So first, Sam, can you explain what is bokeh? So bokeh, you know, I actually just found this out. Going backwards a little bit, uh, bokeh stems from the Japanese word bok or B-O-K-E. I'm not sure how you actually pronounce it. Uh, and it basically means blur. And there's another form of the word which means the quality of blur. And so really when you're talking about bokeh, it's how do the things that are out of focus actually look and how does the lens uh, sort of, you know, define that out of shape lens or out of shape uh, texture and, and look of it really. Okay, so I feel like when as a kind of intermediate photographer or a beginner photographer and even videographer, I hear the term bokeh and what I picture are lights in the background that are out of focus and maybe like street lights that are out of focus. I've downloaded, you know, desktop screen savers that are just like bokeh photos, but it's more than just what, you know, having lights that are out of focus. It's really just what behind you is out of focus and how that looks. Is that more so correct? Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, like for portrait photography, for example, people love to see these sort of out of show, out of focus, blurry circle things going on behind you, and it, it sort of has that professional look in a way. Uh, but yeah, more or less, you know, the, the out of focus light is the most common because really you get those shapes, those those you know, depending on the quality of lens, you get more of a hexagonal or more of a, a spherical shape to your bokeh, and that comes from the highlights. So it's because there's something bright out of focus, there's light coming at the lens. But because it's out of focus, how the lens processes that out of focus light, uh, that gives you that look. And so it, it can be light bulbs, it can also be, you know, a leaf with a lot of light hitting it. You know, there's a lot of nature photos where you have this macro photo where it's really, you know, up close photo to an insect or a bird or whatever it is, and you have these, you know, gorgeous circles that are floating behind them. Mm -hmm. And it's just because there's, you know, sun coming through and there's highlights that are out of focus back there. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so the quality of bokeh, if I'm a photographer and I'm like, I want to get better bokeh, does that mean going out and getting a better lens? Or do you know if primes or zooms are better at getting bokeh? Or what, what, how do you achieve bokeh and how does the lens type affect that? Okay, so yes, the, there is quality of bokeh. And then I think for a lot of people, they love more spherical, softer bokeh. So opposed to a hexagonal shape where you have hard edges on your bokeh, people like more, more you know, circular. Mm -hmm. and, and that does come with higher quality lenses. Um, you know, Zeiss or uh, Hasselblad, you know, these, these big names in, in pro photography, uh, Fuji, they make this beautiful glass. And basically within your, within your lens, you have your aperture ring. And that is what creates that bokeh. You know, as you, stop that down as you move it, that changes the shape of your bokeh. And whether it's a hexagon or a sphere is based off of how the engineers made that aperture open and close mm -hmm. um, and, and really the shape of it. So, you know, more spherical, that means that they've put these blades in that are uh, more circular opposed to hard lines, which make that other sort of shape of uh, bokeh. That um, makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So how does someone go out and after watching this video, they're like, I want to go shoot some photos with bokeh. How do you actually achieve that with really any type of lens, I would say? So with the faster the lens, the easier it is to sort of practice this and, and to and really faster, see it. faster you mean you have... Faster meaning a, a lower f-stop number. So okay. f2.8, f1.4. Um, and the reason for that is as you, you know, as you have a wider or larger aperture, uh, the shallower depth of field you have. Now that doesn't, th there's a lot of things that go into this, you know, focal length and the, you know, the f-stop number, the aperture, uh, those both affect your depth of field. When you have a more open aperture, uh, not only does it get, you know, blurry faster, but it also 
affects that shape of the bokeh because it'll make them larger in a way. Uh, as you stop down, it'll make those those bokeh circles smaller because you know the whole of your aperture is getting mm -hmm. smaller. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, your focal length, uh, as you go to like you know let's let's say you go really telephoto to a, a 200 millimeter lens, for example, mm -hmm. you're so zoomed in at that point that if you know on this setup right now, if we zoomed in on you on a 200 millimeter lens everything behind you is completely out of focus. They, there's no definition in your blur. Whereas with this lens, you know, much, it's at 24 millimeter, you, get, you can sort of see texture back here. It's out of focus, but there's still texture. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, we don't have a, a light or, or some highlight back here to really show that bokeh image, but that, that's more or less, that's what it comes down to. It's what f-stop you're shooting at. So closer to 2.8, 2, you'll more quickly get out of focus and if you have highlights in the background, those will come up as circles, which are your bokeh. Um, as you go to more telephoto, you can still achieve that. And maybe you even stop down a little bit more. Maybe you go to F4, something like that. Uh, but you just need those highlights in the background. You mm -hmm. need sub, you know, your, your, your main subject a certain distance. And really, I think the easiest thing to do is, if you can move your subject, have, have a light bulb back here. Have um, leaves with you know, a lot of sunlight hitting it. And then move your subject far away and try shooting like that. Move them closer, shoot like that. But try and shoot at a faster f-stop if you can. You know, a, a lot of kit lenses will be 3.5 to 5.6. Try staying closer to 3.5. To 3, and then, you know, ultimately it comes down to how out of focus is the stuff out of focus. Because bokeh, to a certain point, you know, you have these circles behind them that are out of focus. The more telephoto you get or the uh, clo you know, more closed down of f-stop you get, those those circles will either become all one giant mat, you know, mm -hmm. sort of mush of blur, yeah. uh, or they'll just not become blur at all, and you'll actually have definition. Like in this shot, you can probably tell that this is wood behind us. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's really just playing with those two things. Uh, I think the easiest way is take something between a 24 to a 70, maybe, maybe even closer to 24, 35, 50, put something, you know, some highlights in the background, and take photos of your subject, and I guarantee you'll start to see those out-of-focus things. Um, also, pointing out a light bulb is a great way to do that. The hard thing there is that there's a lot of light from a light bulb, mm -hmm. so you you know close down your shutter speed, shoot at a lower ISO, so you know ISO 100 or something. Um, and th that's just an example. Depending on your, how much light you have, maybe you need it to be higher. But try and keep your f-stop fully open. Try and keep your aperture fully open because that will give you those nice big bokeh circles in the background. Um, and I will say, quality of glass is gonna make that bokeh look nicer. You know, okay. uh, the more you spend, the, the reason pros use this expensive glass is the quality. I, I, not just bokeh, but also a lot of other things, but <laughs> bokeh is a part, of, a part of that. Yeah, cool. So just to wrap up, the things that, bokeh is basically the blur that happens when you know, you have something in focus and it's in the background, it's out of focus. And it's not only just the blur, it's the quality of that blur. Mm -hmm. To achieve bokeh, you have to be, or it's better to use a lens at a wider aperture. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And make sure that you have a subject that is not too far where you're at infinity focus. You want something that you're focused on a plane that's in the middle of your lens or closer up to your lens than far away. Is that all correct? More or less. You, know, you, 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 got, it, you got it all right. Uh, you can be a lot closer, but then at that point your background needs to be closer. Okay, so um, it's so a combination of everything, like how far your background is, your subject, and your camera. Yeah, and, and it, it'll it's, change. All, it's all exponential because <laughs> as you get closer, you know, the, the quicker things get out of focus, farther you get, the you know, more things will be in focus. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this lesson about bokeh. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you're interested in taking your photography skills to the next level, check out our photography masterclass. There's a link in the description below to check it out. There is over a hundred lessons, 10 plus hours of content that take you from a beginner photographer to intermediate and advanced photographers. So check it out and we'll see you in another video.